Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Last week, Mr. President, of course, was Thanksgiving, uh, a day that we all set aside in America to, to count our blessings. And as we do that, we always say to ourselves, geez, we really ought to be thankful every day of the year for, for uh, the many blessings that have been bestowed, bestowed upon us. I know I say that to myself. So I thought today, uh, for a few minutes, I would, I would mention two things that I am especially thankful for, uh, even though this isn't Thanksgiving, but it is another day that the Lord has blessed us with. Uh, the first thing, uh, and there are many things that we're all thankful for, but the first thing I am thankful for that I want to mention today is for the many public servants that uh, care for and protect American taxpayer money. And, and I want to uh, highlight one in particular. Uh, the chairman of our FCC, Mr. A.G. Pai. And, and let me explain why I am thankful for this public servant, one among many who get up every day and work hard to protect taxpayer money. About two weeks ago, the chairman of the SEC, um, over uh, uh, many uh, uh, obstacles, announced that he was going to hold a public auction for the C-band. Well, why, why is that important? We all have a cell phone now. And many of us have iPads and computers. The Internet has changed our world, changed our lives, made them more complicated, of course. But on balance, I think the Internet has enriched our lives. We're about to move into a new phase of telecommunications called 5G. It stands for fifth generation. It's really just extraordinarily fast internet that can carry huge amounts of data. The ingenuity of the American people takes my breath away. Um, I'm pretty impressed with 4G, but 5G is going to be 100 times faster. It's going to make things possible like, uh, like telemedicine, where a, where, where a specialist in a field of surgery through robotics, and now an incredibly fast internet can operate on a, on a sick patient a thousand miles away and save his or her life, thanks to 5G. Um, we'll be able to hook all of our devices to 5G, through 5G. Save time, gives us more precious time to spend with our family. Uh, driverless cars. Maybe I won't see them in my lifetime, but our assistants here, our pages in the Senate, will see them in their lifetime. And I could go on. But the point is, to make 5G possible, a lot of people have to work together. 5G is made possible through the airwaves. Uh, when, when Internet devices talk to each other, um, Data in the form of radio waves, the scientists call them electromagnetic radiation, but these radio waves go through the airways from one device to another. And we have all sorts of different airways. It's called spectrum. We have airways for radios and TVs. Well, 5G, fifth generation wireless, can be used in a number of different airways or, or different parts of the spectrum, but one part of the spectrum, one part of the airways are just perfect for 5G. It's called the C-band. And that part of the airwaves is able to, to carry these 5G radio waves in a manner that can cover a huge geographical area but also carrying lots of data. It's called the C-band, and it is perfect for 5G. 
it's, um, it's perfect. It's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's just right. Some swamp creatures, both in government and out, came that close, that close, to getting control of the C-band, which is owned by the American people. Led by three foreign satellite companies, they had almost convinced the powers that be to give them the C-band. Just give it to them. And let them decide who's going to get to use that C-band for 5G. Oh, and by the way, in picking the telecommunication companies that would get to use the C-band that was going to be given to them for free by the powers that be, these foreign companies are going to get to keep the money. About $60 billion. That's just the upfront money. $60 billion. That built 7,000 miles of interstate in this country. And not only would the companies get the $60 billion, they would get to decide who could use the C band? And they were that close. But the chairman of the FCC stopped them. And he's going to recommend next week, and I hope the FCC, the full FCC, goes along with him. I'm going to be there to watch. He recommended and is going to recommend that we have a public auction. Doing a public auction is nothing new for the FCC. The, public, the FCC auctions off different airways all the time. In fact, the FCC in the last 25 years has held right around 100, I think it's 93 auction, public auctions, where anybody who wants to, any, any company that wants to, competition, moral good, can come in and bid on, the, on that part of the airways. And the good people at the FCC uh, have brought in to the American taxpayer about $123 billion in the last 25 years by auctioning off these airwaves and giving everybody a fair chance in a fully transparent way in front of God and country. That's the way it ought to be. But a lot of swamp creatures were pushing hard for this private sale. The American taxpayer and I would, only would have lost $60 billion. We would have lost control of the C-band, which according to the Telecommunications Act, or the Communications Act, rather, it doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to the businesses. It belongs to the American people. And uh, we can't let our guard down. I've learned here in my short three years that those swamp creatures, if they can't get in the front door, they're going to try the side door. And if they can't make it through the side door, they're going to try the back door. We've got a lot of money at stake here. So we've got to remain vigilant. But I just wanted to thank A.G. Pye for standing up. Made the right, he made the right people mad. That's, hard, that's, that's easy to talk about, but... Uh, it's hard to do. It takes courage. And he did it, and, and I wanted to single him out. The second thing uh, I wanted to say that I'm thankful for among so many things, Mr. President, I am so thankful for our, our neighbors to the north, Canada. One, I, I visited Canada so many times. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm so proud to call them friends. 37 million people in Canada, some of the finest people that God ever put breath in. We fought together in wars. We fought for freedom that we all take for granted. We trade with each other. They're just, the, the, I mean, the country is just, it's a wonderful country and, and just extraordinarily uh, friendly, decent, God-fearing,
people. Our leaders squabble sometimes. You know, that's just the way life is. Sometimes good friends have disagreements. But, but, uh, and, and, and we're having a few little disagreements right now. But I, on this, uh, this beautiful Thursday, I just wanted to come and say how thankful I am that Canada is our friend and how honored I am uh, to call them friends and how grateful I am for all 37 million of the fine men, women, and children in that great country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I suggest the absence of a quorum.